This looks beautiful. Look at the total here, $6,300. All right, I know everybody is upset that I'm selling my E55, but I promised you, you would love its replacement. And here she is. I have a growing family. I just needed a little bit more room. And an E55 station wagon can fit a lot of kids. And apparently, a decent amount of grown men as well. The jump seat is quite spacious. And if you go around here, well, the door isn't fully closed. Hang on, let me, there we go. Thank you. So we got Hi, three back here. Hello, children. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Hello, hey. sir. How are you? And uh, it's very, very roomy. And this just means we can get to soccer practice a lot quicker. So let's go for a drive. Stop car too low. <laughs> it did not say that before. It has brand new air suspension in the rear. So, whoa. Oh, you closed it. Whoa. How did you guys make it back there? You guys all right? Did you guys close uh, it? Was that an air strut that blew up? No. Uh, yeah. no. All right, so. Yeah, good luck getting home. All right, we're gonna be, we're doing some off-roading as well. Tyler, how does this compare to the E63 wagon? It doesn't look nearly as broken, but the warning lights are certainly <laughs> matching. They're starting- I love the red stop. Yeah, please stop. Please yeah. stop, please, don't yeah. do not do this to don't me. Don't go any further. Um, no more, please. And we also have the, uh, well, it's not coming up now because it wants me to stop. We have the SBC warning light. How do you oh, do that, Tyler? It's, no, it's literally won't let it us do anything. It's, it's pissed. Oh, mm. oh, it's angry. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I hear a tire rubbing. Yeah, okay. All right. Donut. Oh! Oh, yeah. That's a, oh! Oh, boy. Okay, so the wagon is very robust. As you can tell, we can drive around with roughly 2,000 extra pounds of human beings 2, in the back. You think it's not much <laughs> that bad? No, definitely not. I mean, we did we did have a big lunch, though. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, so. food. Anyway, this is the new car, guys. It fits uh, It fits the whole family, the whole crew, and it is quite reliable unless unless you absolutely slam it in the back. How much did it cost? How much did it cost? What do you guys think? Uh, 05 clean title, $35,000 in receipts with this car. So I'm $65,000. $65,000? Yes. Right smack dab in the middle at $12,000. I'd say $15,000. Tyler, you're like... Zero dollars, Bob. Zero dollars. All right, it was $18,000 for the 05 E55 station wagon. Not too bad. And I think it's going to be worth slightly less after this. <laughs> now we know what it looks like when it's lowered. All right, so that's like a four-inch drop. <laughs> There we go. Let's see if we got no more warning light. We're good. Now we're just back to the normal first stage of the SBC pump failing. So my keyless go is kicked out. Your children weigh 800 pounds? No, a little less, a little less than that. Yeah, we should be good. With the car sitting somewhat level because we've removed roughly 1,600 pounds of automotive YouTubers, I can finally show you guys my new car, a total dream car for me. And of course, it is a E55 AMG station wagon or estate, depending on where you come from. Guys, this is the car I've always wanted. I've been actively searching for it for years, but it's a very, very rare AMG car. I consider it to be one of the very best AMG cars, uh, and they don't go up for sale very often. And when they do, they're very expensive. These with lower miles can easily fetch thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. But you know me, I don't want a low mileage example. I want something that I can fix, something that I can modify and enjoy and not have to worry about destroying the collectability of the car. So I picked this car up from New Orleans. Uh, I bought it sight unseen. It was a listing on Bring a Trailer that had ended without selling. Uh, so I reached out after it was over for like a month thinking, eh, this thing's gone. And they actually still had it. Uh, so I had a trip to Florida that we had planned with the family. I'd rented a minivan for like $465. Uh, and then after I bought this, I'm like, wait a minute, it'll cost me 500 from New Orleans to Florida where we're going on vacation. Canceled the minivan, had this shipped up here to beautiful Florida, uh, and here we are. So I actually had the car shipped to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I am at Amelia Island with a bunch of my YouTuber friends. Some of us are judging the concourse car show events here for the weekend. It's fantastic. We're all kind of hanging out together. Uh, it's been an absolute blast, especially because 
I get to bring this car with me. So in this video, I'm going to show you all around this timeless AMG wagon. I'll show you all of the cool and unique features like the third row rear facing seat that makes this a seven seater E55. We're going to fix some stuff back at the legit street cars headquarters. And I'll show you the receipts that came with this car that total about $35,000, including performance mods. And that make this wagon a total steal at $18,000. And there are eight extra wheels and four tires packed in the back that we totally have to check out. But first, a minute for a very loyal sponsor who helps make all of this possible and who saves us money every time we shop online, and that is, of course, Honey. Honey is a totally free web browser extension that automatically applies the internet's best coupon codes when you check out, and it installs in just two clicks. One here, and one here, and you're done. Here's what happens when you don't have Honey. You find a sweet grill, you go to check out, and with tax, it's about $615. But wait, there's an apply button. I'm sure Kohl's will totally hook you up. Oh, an $8.95 discount. Great. So then you watch this video, install Honey, and try again. Same grill, same price, but now the magical coin dude does his dance, and bam, an $87 discount. Honey found an additional coupon code that just saved you a boatload of cash. Honey also works on thousands of other online stores like Amazon, Walmart, Advanced Auto, eBay, and even tires from Tire Rack. As you can see, not having Honey is literally like giving up free money. There's no reason not to install this right now. And it's super easy and installs in just two clicks. So just go to joinhoney.com slash legit streetcars, or you can simply click on my link in the video description box. Big thanks to Honey for continuing to support the channel and for sponsoring this video. All right, so I'm back in Chicago, cold and rainy. Chicago is snowing a little bit earlier and we are in the Caprice PPV. And the driver just called me. He can't pull onto my street. Uh, so we're going to do this right now. Actually, I should probably back up a little bit. But there she is. There is the E55. Uh, I'm going to help him unload this very, very quickly uh, so we can get off this big street. All right, so let's inspect this thing before he starts taking it off the trailer. Uh, I knew the fender was like this. That happened when an air strut blew out. Uh, this always freaks me out. Luckily, this thing is not lowered. All right, we still got all of our wheels packed in here. I have a total of eight wheels. Four of them have tires and a bunch of other stuff. I had a family member in Florida that sent me back with a bunch of food. <laughs> but look at how useful the wagon is already. You can fit so much stuff in here. Let's make sure everything's okay. Check coolant level. All right, awesome. That was not on when I left. Uh, brake service, uh, yeah, visit workshop. Could be a stop lamp switch or an SBC pump failing, but we're gonna have to take a look. Hopefully we don't have a coolant leak under the car. All right, I took a good look underneath the E55. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, the coolant is a little bit low. It's hard to tell on camera, but nothing major. So what I wanted to look for was that he didn't uh, accidentally rip something off from the bottom of the car and damage the uh, water to air heat exchanger in the front that could dump all the coolant. So. Everything looks good. Did you guys really think that I could live my life without an E55 AMG in it? I couldn't even sell my 2003 sedan before buying this, but the wagon has always been the E55 that I've wanted, and I'm so excited that it's finally here. I can start fixing it up. It needs some work. And of course, you guys know I'm gonna modify this car, and I've been dying to show it to you. I've owned it for two months now, but it wasn't physically here in Chicago, but that gave us enough time for the custom license plates to come in. So the legit streetcar's wagon has arrived. All right, we're gonna kick this off by working on the 03. You guys voted on Instagram and on Facebook that this flat bottom hood emblem has to go. It was on here when I bought the car. So let's get rid of it. And we're going back to stock. Come on, baby. There we go. There she is. Both of them have matching factory hood emblems. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section, but literally, I think hundreds of people voted uh, for me to swap this out. So do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, I don't know. I'm a little like a little reserved here now because this is the same as this. I, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, let's move on to the wagon. I got to show you everything about this car and stop typing right now. I know exactly what you're saying, Alex. 
the headlights are yellowed. Literally every old car I buy has broken motor mounts and yellowed headlights. The motor mounts are okay though. So let's just fix this up right now because I think these are excellent candidates for a restoration. Let's get to it. All right. Let's see how she looks. Oh, yes. This looks beautiful. Guys, don't even think about selling your car before you simply polish out your headlights. I swear, this makes your car worth more money. And this time, I didn't even wet sand. All I used was a coarse pad and some coarse compound and about five minutes worth of love on this headlight and just take a look at the difference. All right, I have a grand total of maybe 10 minutes into this. And of course, we're gonna top it off with some Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating so that the UV light doesn't damage and yellow the headlight again. Very simple to do this. All right, let it sit for a minute, wipe it off, and you're done. If you guys wanna see an entire video on how I polish and coat headlights, I'll link it down below. All right, so we went from looking all yellowed and nasty and old to brand spanking new and crystal clear. If you guys wanna learn how to ceramic coat every exterior surface of your car in about two minutes, I'll leave my cop car video linked down below as well, and a $25 off coupon code for your very own Avalon King ceramic coating kit. So the engine on the 03 E55 was built by M. Weisgenber, that is exactly how you pronounce it in German or whatever that is, and on the 05, it was built by Kurt Brass, Kurt Brass. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Let me know in the comments section. I always brutalize their names, but moving on to a couple of little simple repairs. We have a nasty cabin filter, and in my Mercedes parts storage warehouse in the attic, I have a brand new one from years ago. Uh, so we're going to be installing that. And then as you can see here, the coolant is kind of low. I've looked for leaks and I can't find any. So we have our Mercedes coolant. And we're gonna top her off. And then in the next episode, when I fix pretty much every single thing that's broken on this car, uh, we'll pressure test this and make sure we don't have any leaks. All right, brand new cabin filter is installed. Nasty one's going in the garbage. And check this out, it has a positive battery terminal post uh, right there on the wagon. And on the sedan, that is missing, except on mine, I have a methanol injection solenoid. The coolant warning light is gone, so hopefully it just needed a top off and that is fixed, but this is the brake visit workshop light that I've been getting. This could be a $20 stop lamp switch, or if you have codes like this, C2258 or C2131, it could be an issue with this, the SBC hydraulic brake pump unit. So up until recently, this was a very expensive repair, a couple grand at the dealership, but in North America and some other places, Mercedes-Benz extended the warranty for 25 years, meaning all I have to do is take my wagon to the Mercedes dealer, maybe get a cool new loaner, and they'll replace that unit and the brake fluid at the same time. So this car has brake by wire, and they program a service limit threshold into this unit basically when the Mercedes engineers think that it's worn out and should be replaced but it doesn't mean uh, that you don't have any brakes they give you a soft warning which is what you see on the screen now and eventually that turns to red and that means you should really replace this thing these are CLS 63 wheels from Mercedes I have a receipt that shows five thousand dollars for these wheels and tires brand new that's what the guy before me paid for these uh, so factory Mercedes wheels are obviously very very expensive uh, but he also included these. These are some pretty cool Ford stars. I really, really like these, uh, but one of them is pretty badly damaged. Look at this. And I have receipts for the guy before me bringing this car in seriously like 15 times uh, for tire and wheel problems. He's probably spent literally $10,000 on tires and wheels in the last 50,000 miles that he owned it. Uh, now he also included the factory wheels. These really aren't worth much. And one of them of course was welded, but this was included in the sale too. So for whatever it's worth, I have two extra sets of wheels and some really nice continental tires. They're practically brand new. So 18,000 bucks for the car. And if I wanted to, I could sell all all of these wheels off and consolidate them into one pair that I really want, which I'm working on right now. Obviously, one of the biggest features to an E55 station wagon is simply how much room you get back here. It is kind of like a baby pickup truck. You can
can fit a ton of stuff. I had all eight wheels, four of them with tires. Uh, I had a box. I had bags back here. I had everything. Uh, so you get a ton of room. This is very, very usable. And something that I noticed that's different compared to my other E55 uh, is the stitching on the headliner. So let me know in the comments section if this is something they brought on maybe later on. This is a 2005. My other one's a 2003, but it has this gorgeous stitching uh, throughout the entire Alcantara or suede headliner or whatever they make these things out of. Uh, and the headliner on this car is in excellent condition. Something that drew me to this wagon in general is simply how nice the interior is. And this one, like all the wagons, is pretty well loaded up. So you get your keyless go, which does not actually work right now because I think that warning message in the cluster will turn that off. But you have keyless go, uh, you have heated and cool dynamic seats. So it has active bolsters. When you take a turn, they inflate and deflate to keep you centered in the seat. Uh, and something that I really like is the previous owner replaced uh, the mundane kind of boring steering wheel that these come with, uh, with a flat bottom steering wheel. It has perforated leather on the sides. It feels really nice. It's very high quality. Uh, and I just think it matches the interior of this older AMG perfectly. I will be installing the aluminum E63 style paddle shifters like I have on the 03 E55. And an option that the wagon is missing is panoramic sunroof. So I love this on my other E55, but it wasn't even an option on the wagon. As I'm sure you could imagine, that would require uh, some work to be done in the roof that just probably wasn't worth it to Mercedes for the amount of these that they're making. So because it wasn't even an option, I don't feel as bad. It was only like 2,500 RPM, people. Don't worry. I know the engines are kind of cold. They're not going to blow up, though. I promise. You put these up. Then you do one of these. You got to hold these back. Ugh, Ty, okay. Tyler had to show me how to do this. It's the same way uh, on his E63 wagon. And there you go. There is the, uh, the third row jump seat. So this is basically only good for a small child uh, or Ed Bullion and Jared from Wrench Every Day. Those guys were pretty tiny as well. Uh, and they fit back here really nicely. But take a look, I'm a, I'm a little guy, I'm like 5'9". And this is pretty much impossible. Definitely not safe to be back here as an adult. It's not budging, the subframe is like smushed in. I can't even get this panel off. Not good. Wait till you guys see this. Uh. All right. Bent it enough to get this out of the way. All right, so I don't think this is a big deal and it looks like it's been like this for quite some time, but this little ear is supposed to have a clip on it. It fell off, so it's supposed to look like this and then you put one of the screws uh, through it to hold the plastic panel down. This one broke off. There was a zip tie on this side. Uh, so it looks like that was pushed back, so he probably hit something. Uh, I don't suspect any real damage to the actual subframe, to the structure of it. The alignment is perfect. Uh, I'm definitely not gonna go ahead and replace the subframe before putting this on the alignment rack to see if we have any actual issues, but I don't suspect any. So I'll just kind of bend this ear back uh, so we can put our clip back on. Uh, but take a look at this. You see this oil pan right here? It looks pretty shiny and new compared to the rest of everything under here. Well, that's because a few years ago, he did hit something, uh, found oil pan damaged and pouring engine oil. Not good, not a good thing to see, except when you look at the odometer. So this is quite a few thousand miles ago, I think like 16, whatever the math is, 15,000 miles ago. Uh, so the engine's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. He probably just shut it off immediately. Uh, so they removed the subframe for access. Uh, they also did the engine mounts at the same time and replaced that oil pan. Uh, so this is probably when that got damaged a while back and they were able to figure out a way to finagle that plastic shield in and out to do their oil changes after that. But uh, they also did the supercharger pulley and the belt. 
Uh, they did a headlight and then they did a new front strut assembly on the left side. So this is an expensive repair. So we have one brand new airmatic strut. And oddly enough, uh, this is the side that supposedly something blew out, they told me. And that's why I damaged the fender. But this is the side that has the old strut. So we're definitely going to be replacing that. It's kind of a little weird. I was expecting to see a new one on that side as well. But take a look at the total for this. $4,800 for this repair oil pan, uh, the pulley and the strut basically. And then something else that looks shiny and new is this transmission. So this is straight from the Mercedes-Benz dealer. They got the transmission from the dealer, a very expensive unit. Uh, and they had an independent shop install it. So drop pan, uh, found lots of debris, large metal and transmission fluid, internal failure. Uh, then they did the rear main seal, of course, since you have the transmission out. And look at the total here, $6,300. So we have, what, about eleven grand just between these two receipts right here. And I have a stack, guys. This car came with everything. And this is just about in the last 50,000 miles. That's how many miles the last owner put on it. So this is about $10,000 in oil changes, spark plugs, normal maintenance, and tires. And then these are some of the larger receipts. So take a look at this. They did a new front bumper I'm not exactly sure why. It was way after the whole oil pan fiasco, uh, but it looks like they got a new front bumper cover from Mercedes. It was 1400 bucks for the plastic cover itself. Um, so I'm assuming this got slightly damaged. I really don't know. Uh, but they replaced the entire front bumper, painted, did an oil change, all sorts of stuff. And $4,200 for the front bumper. So we have uh, a front Mercedes bumper that's in excellent condition. Nothing's cracked. This is fantastic, even though I'm probably going to be replacing it with the E63 bumper. Uh, but that's one of them. And then moving on to the modification. So this is a while back. This is uh, 11 years ago at 54,000 miles. They installed a Kleeman pulley kit and headers. Uh, they replaced a bunch of the other pulleys, some spark plugs, valve cover gaskets, uh, install heat exchanger, Dino Tune, it doesn't have numbers though. Um, and then a bunch of other little things. 4189. So this actually has a larger crankshaft pulley right here. Uh, so a couple ways to increase the boost on a supercharged engine is to put a smaller supercharger pulley on or a larger crank pulley. They accomplish the same thing, which is spinning the supercharger faster. So that's actually a really expensive piece. A lot of guys just switch out the supercharger pulley like I did on my car, uh, but it has the headers. These are just mid-length headers. So I'm going to swap those out uh, for long tubes for sure. Uh, and then the rest of the exhaust, and this part of it is kind of similar to the 03. It had mid-length headers as well and no cats, but the rest of the exhaust was stock. This one has the factory catalytic converters, the factory resonator, and the factory mufflers back here. So it's pretty tame. You can't even really tell uh, that anything has been done to the exhaust. Another big ticket item are the rear air springs. These look practically brand new. And these are, are not units. They're not factory uh, Mercedes-Benz air springs. And that's because replacing both rear air springs with factory parts with an alignment is $3,800. And that's completely insane. So the guy uh, declined that. He also declined uh, the right front air strut leaking. I just saw this. And this wasn't too long ago. So we definitely have to replace that one. It has three brand new uh, air struts on the car and one remaining. So I'm going to be replacing that one. Uh, but what we have back there are r not units. Uh, they're aftermarket. They're fantastic. I did them on this car. Uh, and I think both in the rear are like 600 bucks. It takes you a couple hours to replace. Uh, so anyway, without going through all of these, we have uh, a charcoal canister for $518. Uh, we have a supercharger uh, belt tensioner failing and a belt. Again, this thing's had a bunch of belts done to it. And an oil change and new wipers, $1,194. I don't know. Uh, we have a latch in the back uh, for $611. We have a latch again, $428. <laughs> uh, let's see that one of the door handles for the keyless go, $384. We have a cracked wheel and an air suspension compressor replaced. That's this guy right here. So that's nice to have. That looks to be new. And that was $669. Uh, yeah, guys, it just never ends. $891, $713. Um, and like I said, this, here's your $5,000 receipt for the CLS wheels. And then this right here is seriously another like $10,000, $12,000 in normal maintenance and other repair. So this is what you want when you buy an old German car. You want to get an envelope full of stuff. And you guys aren't going to believe 
that this car needs even more. Had this guy kept it and kept bringing it to a shop to get repaired, another four or $5,000 easy needs to go into the wagon. So what's it like driving a 550 horsepower AMG station wagon? <laughs> Absolutely glorious. Woo! This thing is a beast. Oh, yes. It's a ton of fun driving the wagon. It's pretty much like driving my other E55. I think weight-wise, they're pretty close because that one has the panoramic sunroof. So these really aren't that much slower uh, than the normal sedans. Uh, but something that's very interesting is you're able to fly totally under the radar in a wagon. It's difficult explaining what the appeal is to a non-car enthusiast. I've told uh, some non-car friends and family members how excited I am about having a station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and they just don't get it. They don't get it. They think of old, back in the old days when you pile in the old woody wagon. And it's definitely not like that at all. <laughs> needs a posi. I gotta say, I think these need a posi. They have open diffs. A lot of AMGs did back in the day. Uh, it'd just be a lot more fun if we had a posi back there. Uh, but let's make it happen. We got a lot of mods to do to this car. So for you guys who aren't too familiar with these cars, they were sold in the United States for 05 and 06. And I think less than 200 of them sold here, which is a shame. But as you guys know, in the United States, for some reason, people don't like station wagons. I like to call those people crazy people because I absolutely love them. But we're lucky enough uh, that Mercedes and AMG sold any of these here and they still continue to sell them today. So this morphed into the E63. There was a 211 E63, uh, then the 212. We still have an E63 uh, today with a bi-turbo four liter all wheel drive. It's absolutely amazing. So the E55 station wagon has your typical M113K engine. So 469 horsepower on 516 pound feet of torque. Many people think that was way underrated because they wanted the SL and the more flagship vehicles with the same engine uh, to show more power on paper. Uh, so this one, of course, as you saw, has the modifications. So it has roughly about 550 crank horsepower. These things take very well uh, to more boost and especially to headers. Uh, and this was tuned by Rentec as well. So very, very quick car. I would imagine this is an 11 second car right now. We're gonna see uh, probably a high 11 second car. We're gonna see how much better we can make that uh, with some modifications coming up this spring. And that's my E55 AMG station wagon in a nutshell. So obviously there is gonna be a ton more content on this car. I already have the E63 front bumper. Uh, I have the side skirts as well. These are a little cracked up in a couple places. And this car just needs kind of like a big cosmetic restoration. There's a million little rock chips on the hood. Uh, so parts of the car will get painted. We'll do a full paint correction, ceramic coating. Uh, I have wheels in mind. I wanna play tribute to the older AMGs uh, and come up with something very unique and possibly custom. So really excited about wheels on this car. Uh, we have performance modifications already coming as well. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram where I am gonna be bombarding my page uh, with sweet pictures of this wagon and all my other cars. Uh, so at Legit Street Cars on Instagram and on Facebook. Book. That'll do it for today's video. I hope all of you really enjoyed this one. I hope you love the E55 wagon and let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below and let me know what you'd like to see me do with this car as well. So I now that this is out of the way, I am pretty sure you guys know of every single vehicle that I own. I'd been keeping this under wraps for so long, uh, but I am going to be bidding on one soon. You guys are going to love it. It's an AMG. It's got a bunch of cylinders and other cool things like that. Uh, so hopefully we'll see that on the channel very, very very soon. Uh, with that being said, hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. I've looked at analytics and 70% of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed. We could have a much bigger channel, people, so hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell as well. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. So what's it like driving a 550 horsepower AMG station wagon?
I couldn't even sell my 2003 sedan before buying this, the wagon. That's what I bought. All right, come on.